Welcome to the Massage Hodge podcast. My name is Nick Paterka, a licensed massage therapist in Portland, Oregon. I am joined today by fellow licensed massage therapist, Rebecca Tam in the state of Michigan. Hello and welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Your practice there in Michigan is called Michigan Massage and Wellness. Yes. And it's you and a couple other practitioners, I believe. Yes. And you have over 17 years of experience in this field. Yeah. We will um, attempt to absorb some of your wisdom from that later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you astounded by that number? What wisdom I ha- have to give? What's did, that? It ha- did it happen fast, the 17 years? Uh, yeah, absolutely did. And yeah. before I went to massage school, one of my friends used to tease me like, oh, you've been at a job in two years. Are you ready to quit yet? And uh, here I am 17 years later. Yeah, no but, doubt. Well, so speaking of that, maybe give us, give us the origin story. How did you find yourself becoming a massage therapist to start with? So it's a really funny story. Um, back when I was at the ripe old age of 24, 23, I'm going to be 42 in a couple of weeks. Um, the same age. Oh yeah. Happy yeah. birthday. <laughs> I mean, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, and I, I guess I was having what is now known as a quarter life crisis. Um, okay. so I dropped out of high school halfway through my senior year and I, I, I like to say now that I just wasn't feeling challenged enough. Um, and I was bored, you know, that, that's my fancy way of saying, I just didn't want to go. And I got my GED. I, you know, I left school on a Friday at midwinter break. And then Monday, I started working full time at my job. So I definitely wasn't, you know, bouncing around having fun. And I had taken some classes at the local community college, but I don't even have an associate's degree because everything I was interested in, it was kind of like, what do I want to be when I grow up? Mm -hmm. And um, i had always worked in offices, you know, had kind of resigned myself to cubicle life and when I was in my early twenties, I got a job working for an automotive magazine, which, you know, in the Metro Detroit area were the motor city. So it was a great job to have. Um, but I, you know, I was coming home with headaches every day. And again, like 23, 24 years old, trying to figure out what do I want to do? And I was still living at home at the time. And I think my sister had actually requested a brochure from the massage school that I visited. And I I remember coming home, having another headache, being frustrated and annoyed and, and everything and thinking like, is this all there is? And I saw a brochure for Irene's My Massology Institute. And mind you, I had never gotten a massage. I had never given a massage. I had never, you know, like rubbed anyone's back. They were like, oh, you're really good. You should do this. So I just thought, you know, I'll go check this out. So I went to the school, I took a tour and I thought, well, if, if I'm going to do something like this, now's the time, you know, I'm still living at home. I don't have a lot of obligations. So I went into work the next day. I put in my two weeks notice. I cashed in my 401k paid. I think at the time it was like $4,500 for school. Now I think it's 15,000. So definitely got a bargain back then. (laughs) And I I decided, you know, I'm going to just kind of take a year off because yeah, I was 24 and I'm like, I've been working since I was 14. I'm tired. Um, little did I know. (laughs) So I, you know, I, I went through the year long program. Um, when I went to Irene's, it was a 600 or 650 hour program. Um, and licensing requirements now in the state of Michigan are 500 hours. Mm. So we had, you know, over and and back then we didn't even become uh, required to have a license through the state until, gosh, I want to say maybe 2014, 2013, something like that. It, it, it was it was quite a long while. So I had my national certification exam and, and blah, blah, blah. But so I went to school for a year and found out just something just clicked and it was funny because when I was in massage school, all I wanted to do was get a job working at a fancy day spa, doing fancy body treatments and seaweed wraps. And out of school, I got a job doing just that at a very prominent, well-known salon and spa in the area. And I quit there four different times. <laughs> um, and they kept pulling you back in. 
They, they did. They did. And I, you know, I kept thinking like, maybe this time it'll be different. And, you know, lies we tell ourselves. Um, and it finally got to the point when I was driving in for one shift a month, a four hour shift, and I would be driving to work crying. And that's uh-huh. when I knew like something's got to change. And I had no plans to start my own practice. Um, everything just kind of fell into place. And, you know, when I found the office where I was at for over 12 years, um, I had two, two clients that I was doing house calls for. And, um, and then, you know, I just thought, well, okay, I'll give this a go. And again, I ended up being in that single location, single office for 12 plus years. And, you know, I hired someone, had a couple of people and then went back to being by myself. And then three years ago, I moved into my new location where I'm at now and did a name change because you know, I thought, well, we're not in the same city anymore. So let's just mm-hmm. branch it out and call ourselves Michigan Massage and Wellness. It's interesting to hear, because I've heard this before about therapists who have zero experience in their lives with massage yeah. going to school for it. Like I had very little personally. Yeah. And I didn't have some crazy story. I just was like, oh, that sounds interesting. I'll go do that. Yeah. 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 That, that's kind of how I was. And and, you know, it's funny because I'll be going back to work on Monday um, after not working for the last three months because of all this COVID stuff. Yeah. And, you know, Michigan was one of the hardest states hit. And, you know, last year I was really trying to grow and expand my business and like look at outside opportunities and, you know, different ways to market ourselves. And, you know, I had my hand in all these different pots. And what not working for three months has taught me is that I want to go back to just kind of the basics, you know, back to simplifying mm-hmm. things. And I just want to see my clients. And, you know, we, we had a staff meeting yesterday. I have two therapists currently who work for me and, you know, not seeing them after three months was so great. And now I'm just, you know, because we, we just found out last week that we could go back to work on Monday. I had been planning this whole time to reopen July 6th. And they're like, Oh no, you know, I had clients reaching out to me. Hey, you can go back to work. I'm like, what? I step away from my phone for an hour and I have 15 text messages like, okay, slow down. Yeah. Let me, let me process this. And yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. So oh, wait, before I lose the thread of it, what do you think what it was about that posh place that, that had you not oh. loving it? Like, cause oh, some man. people do love that work. Like, yeah. Yeah. And and it, was it, was it too monotonous or you're just like, you didn't feel like you were having the kind of impact you wanted to have or. Yeah. So it was, it was kind of a lot of things. Um, the biggest thing, and, and also now like being on the other end, you know, running the operations and running the show, like I do now, I mean, I understand why, but you know, I was a little resentful, like they're charging, you know, this much for a massage mm-hmm. and I'm only getting this much and I'm doing all the work. And, you know, they were, they weren't really pushy, but they put, you know, they put an emphasis on retail sales and like, I'm not a salesperson, you know? And we were in just small, small rooms. And, you know, when you have, it's like you, you know, I was working a shift from nine to one and, you know, I would work, you know, nine to 10, 10 to 11, like barely any time to go to the bathroom and flip the room, let alone just have a little downtime. And a lot of it too was, well, you know, I'll just say the clientele. Um, it's again, it was in a wealthy mm-hmm. part of the mall. You know, they don't even call it the mall. It's it's the collection. And, oh you know, I just didn't fit in with that whole, you know, that whole demographic. As a friend of mine in the Chicago suburb says, like, I want to see people, you know, who are like doctors and lawyers, business people. I don't want to see the Gold Coast Real Housewives of Chicago, okay. you know, and, and that's just it. It's like I wanted to make a difference and I didn't feel like that work that I was doing, you know, I, I felt like, um, you know, it, it just wasn't the right fit. Yeah. And, yeah. and after, after doing exactly what I wanted to do, I realized I don't want to do this anymore. I want to do something else. Yeah. So, yeah, you know. 
Yeah. So, okay, let's, let's look at, let's look at Michigan. I know you referenced it a little bit. So what's the, what's it take to get a license there and to maintain a license in your state at this time? So, yeah, um, we didn't have any licensing requirements for quite a long time. And again, I want to say it was, you know, and I I did some research before this, um, like 2014, Mm -hmm. um, you couldn't get grandfathered in after 2014. So I, I do think, yeah, I, I've renewed my license twice now. I just renewed it again last year. So we have to renew every three years. It's $225. And I believe we have to have 18 continuing credit okay. or continuing at hours every and three years. Up front, um, the programs are, well, the requirement is 500 hours. Oh, yeah, for them to, to get, yeah. yeah. So it's 500 hours and at least 200 have to be hands on, at least from the information that I found, yeah. you know, unfortunately, I, I hate to say, you know, cause I, I love Michigan. I've lived here my entire life. I'll probably die here, but they aren't really forthcoming with information. And, you know, I, I found like Googling just an article from massage magazine had more information than yeah. our own state website did and, and did, did they take the mblex there one of the other big tests I assume. so uh yeah they do they do take yeah. the mblex because my newest hire she just took her M- mblex but i did the national certification um right. and but yeah we were able when i originally applied we were able to be grandfathered in because you know i had graduated right 10 years prior okay so that seems pretty straightforward um as far as becoming a therapist there, kind Mm -hmm. of in line with a lot of other places. So maybe give us obviously it's still 2020, the year that knocked us all down. Uh, Yeah. Can we, can we send 2020 back for a refund? And like, what's, what's coming in July? Are we going to have a real life independence day with aliens? Like there's too many, what's next at this point? Beyond COVID, there's so many important things happening in the world that I I think we all, we all need 2020 to, to shake us up and shake us down and, yeah, come out yeah, the other definitely. side of it, different people. So yeah, yeah. I, all that initial I, I really let's, let's that. send twenty twenty back. I think we all need to just embrace it now. <laughs> yeah. Just look at twenty twenty in the face and say, "What else you got?" <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, we can we can work through it. But so, how did the crisis unfold there early on? And I know you said you were hit really hard. And kind yeah, of, how, did, so, how did your practice go through it and that kind of thing? So you know, I I'm the type of person that. Uh, I mean, I'll just say like, I, I don't typically watch the news, keep up with current events and everything. And, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of it is ignorance on my part, but also my, you know, my thinking is if, if it doesn't affect me directly or people I care about, or if there's not something I can do directly to impact it, why am I going to expend all the energy, you know, worrying about it? And when the whole COVID situation started to unfold, I still, I, so I went on a vacation, um, the first week of February, I was taking a cruise and, and I had talked with a client and she said something about, Oh, the novel coronavirus. And you know, we were chatting a little bit, but I, you know, really wasn't front of mind. And then when I was waiting to board the cruise ship, we had to answer all these different questions. Like, have you been to China in the last 14 days? Are you running a fever? And like, that's new. And they were taking their time getting us on board and, and then, you know, came back and got back to work and everything. And, and I remember March 16th, um, we, you know, we got the word that we were asked to close our businesses, you know, for two weeks, we're going under the state of emergency and everything. And I remember calling my landlord and saying, Hey, so we have to close. I think it's only going to be two weeks and, you know, canceled all of our clients for the rest of March, rebooked everybody. So April was going to be a great month. And, and then we got pushed back again. So we rescheduled, you know, we canceled everyone through April 15th. And then at that point, when we found out like, this is like, this is happening. Mm -hmm. um, We ended up, just clearing our books for the rest of April. And we thought, okay, hopefully we'll see you in May. And then May happened. And, you know, it, it was interesting because I I finally accepted recently that 
me and so many other people were going through some type of trauma where mm-hmm. I kept trying to fight it. And, you know, there were days where just, I, I just couldn't function and, and I'm watching everything unfold around the world. And I got so absorbed into all of it. And, and I thought, wow, this is why I don't watch the news because like my mental health is really struggling right now. And, you know, talking with clients and, you know, clients reaching out to me, like, I don't understand why I can go to physical therapy or the chiropractor, but I can't come and see you because, you know, originally the wording was a little ambiguous and I had reached out to the state licensing board and I asked them, um, you know, this was more recent, like in the last month, but I, and I said, like, why, why can someone go see a chiropractor, but they can't see us, or they can go get a massage at physical therapy, but they can't see us. And, and again, the, the lack of information that we got from the state was really disheartening because Mm -hmm. we were being forced and, you know, we're still kind of being forced to find our own information and, you know, figure stuff out. But that, and then there was the whole mess a few weeks ago of like, oh, if you work, if you're an employee for a chiropractor doing massage, you can go back to work. But independent contractors and everybody else, you can't. And, and it's kind of a double standard too. Like, oh, just because there's someone with a medical degree, you know, yeah. and, and they group us all into non-essential personal care services where, you know, the work that I do definitely falls more on the therapeutic and like medical route. I mean, we offer a medical massage in our practice, but because we're not a medical facility, mm-hmm. we couldn't work. And, and then it got to the point, you know, it was, again, it was, it was pretty rough for a while there because we just, you know, unfortunately we don't have, you know, the money to lobby like, the chiropractic board does and the medical board and everybody else. And, and that's honestly, that's, I I feel like that's why they were still able to stay open because, you know, some chiros were saying, Oh, we're open for emergency appointments anyway, or only, but I was able to get in and, you know, it was more of a discomfort than an emergency. And then you get this attitude of that's not fair. And then, you know, again, the, the feelings that I experienced during the last three months you know, I, I think I needed to feel them and it really made me evaluate my, you know, my own future as a massage therapist yeah. and, and everything. But after that, you know, March and April were really tough. Um, and then I just, I had, you know, kind of a come to Jesus meeting with myself at the end of April. And I said, okay, this is not good for your mental health or for your physical health. You know, you got to just kind of give it up not not my career but just you know stop fighting and and then just sit back and wait and so for me who you know everything falls on me from running the business to you know my house and my dogs like every decision is up to me and I think that's what I had the hardest with was finally realizing there's something out of my control and I have no control so you know, that, that was, that was tough, but once I kind of got, got that going and, you know, May came around and it's like, okay, we're in a better pay, place mentally, physically, emotionally. And it figures, you know, I decided, okay, we're tentatively going to go, you know, and open July 6th. So June, I'm going to enjoy, I'm going to take a summer vacation. I'm going to look at this as a gift, you know, and a reset for, you know, not only my business, but kind of the world with everything because we all went through this together and I thought man I'm gonna have so much fun in June my birthday's at the end of the month I'm gonna work on my tan I'm gonna have fun and relax and then they're like oh you can go back June 15th so now it's this mad scramble to get everything together so we can open next next week yeah yeah (laughs) so now like the whole new you know a new type of stress starts in but now I'm at a point, it's like, okay, we open Monday next week and I've already got, you know, my schedule is full. We had a team meeting yesterday to go over logistics and everything. We've got our, you know, PPE coming. We've got most of it. We've got, 
you know, systems and processes set in place. So we're going to do a little bit of a soft opening for the remainder of June. And then our goal is July 6 to be like back to open, fully operational. Yeah. And see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got to got to get back into it. So, so how do you feel like the the crisis from your perspective? How is it changing our industry from a global perspective? Well, and I know we've um, lost quite a few therapists. Some people are just they're they can't yeah, they're, they don't want to be in the field. I mean, they, may, yeah. they were maybe close to retirement anyway, but they've kind of just said too un, too much uncertainty. I'm going to go do something else. But maybe other other changes you you might yeah. see happening. So I know for me personally, I, I always joke that I'm pretty much unemployable at this point. And I mean, it's true. You know, I've been making my own schedule, doing my own thing for you know. I I opened my business 15 years ago. It'll be 16 in October. So I mean, I I went from like school, worked for other people for a year, and then just decided, hey, I'm I'm going to have my own practice. And, you know, kind of learned as I went. Um, and for me, you know, and, and I've spoken with several friends across the country that, you know, are massage therapists, they either work for other places or they own their own practice. And a lot of them, you know, have looked at like, oh, I'm looking at a plan B now, or, you know, I'm kind of using this as a my exit strategy. And I don't know if it's just blissful ignorance on my part, but throughout everything, quitting has never been an option. Mm -hmm. And and I found too that a lot of the people that were saying that, you know, they have a spouse at home or, you know, they have a source of second income where I don't, it's just me. It's been just me this whole time. And got to get those dogs on Instagram, making some money for you. (laughs) (laughs) No, I got to get them scheduling some appointments for me or something, (laughs) man. Um, And, you know, so quitting is has never been an option and it's funny because my my old place where I was at for over 12 years I was on a month to month lease for 12 plus years and when I moved into my new building you know I went from having a single you know 200 square foot room to a 1450 square foot facility oh, wow. and I had to sign a 5 year lease and I remember looking at this like very official like hey if I break the terms they can sue me because it's all in here, yeah. Um, this contract and thinking five years, but here we are three years in already. I'm like, where did the time go? And, but what this whole thing has helped me do, because again, last year I was trying to do way too much and nothing was really getting done. And this whole reset, like I said earlier, has shown me that I just want to work on clients and you know, I want to train my staff to be the best therapist that they can be and help them grow personally and professionally. And now I'm kind of shifting to where, you know, at the beginning of 2020, I had started to reduce my hands on hours a little bit because I wanted to have more time to work on the business, you know, because you can do one, but not the, you can either do one or the other, you can work in it or on it, but you can't do both at the same time. And Again, I was so committed to like growing and expanding and now I still want to, but I've really had a shift in what my priorities are, where my focus is. And, you know, we, we want to, we want to be like, you know, the cheers of the massage therapy practices in Michigan. You know, you go there, everybody knows your name. You know, Mm -hmm. we, we have a small practice, um, you know, we have a small staff and, you know, my, my amazing business coach out in Virginia, they have right now, I think they have 15 treatment rooms are doing an expansion and 30 plus massage therapists. I'm like, no, that's way too many people to keep track of where we have two therapists, you know, I'd like to add one more and just have a small kind of like a boutique, you know, wellness center. Because in addition to massage, I also teach uh, something called yoga tune-up. And I like to say it's yoga for people who don't like yoga. Mm. Um, Because I don't get into the whole, you know, downward dog, like sun salutation, flow and everything. Mine is more teaching people to take ownership and accountability for what's going on in their body Mm. and teach them how to fix it. And I, I say now I love fixing people. But I really love teaching people how to fix themselves too. So yeah, they can, yeah. you know, take care of themselves in between sessions. Oh, that's cool. So as someone with over 17 years of experience, 
I feel like I should yeah. just say with nearly 20 years of experience. I know. <laughs> my gosh. I know where, where's where's my little like, you know, retirement cup or something, you know, my little trophy. You know? And uh, so I, it sounds like you you have you probably have direct experience with this. But what do you say to new therapists when it as it comes to longevity in the field? Do you, do you have them think about it in any way if they want to practice for a long time? What, what would you say to that? Um, respect your body. Take care of your body. You know, er, early on, um, I, I had a friend who, after massage school, she got a job out in California. And she was saying how, oh, like, I'm seeing, you know, 35 clients a week. And in my head, I thought, well, that's great. Have fun doing that in a year. Wow. And, and my own, you know, my own mentor from school, one of my instructors, he, uh, you know, he shared his story during classes about his carpal tunnel, about how when he got out of school, he was working, you know, 12 hours, six days a week. And it got to the point he couldn't even pick up, you know, a hairbrush. And I, I've always, you know, I, I've always been very mindful of my body and its limits. And um, I, I'm, re- and especially now, I'm really good at taking time off. You know, a lot, a lot of therapists, especially when they're first getting started. And I went through that too. You know, you feel like you have to see every single person that comes through your door mm-hmm. and, you know, you have to work hours you don't want to work. And unfortunately you kind of do because, you know, it's called paying your dues. However, what I've learned, especially in the last probably five years, because that's when I really, I, I went on a continuing education bender and it's completely shifted my practice. And now I'm investing in myself with a business coach, you know, with that accountability, with masterminds where, um, you know, 17 years ago, I don't, I mean, I'm sure they had stuff like that, but I didn't know about it. So I think for therapists now, they're at both an advantage and a disadvantage because they have the advantage of like social media and, you know, working with people that they wouldn't otherwise be able to work with. However, a lot of it is over information too. And, you know, then you end up like me trying to do 20 different things in one day. Um, but I would say, and also, you know, find your ideal client. Um, you know, we have like in, in my, in my coaching group, we work on our ideal client avatars because you think of, you don't want to see everybody. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are people, they're not a good fit for our practice. And, I won't take anybody who walks in the door now. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and my own practice has shifted in a way I'm not really even doing, I don't want to say regular massage, but you know, more traditional massages anymore. I have a handful of clients that I still see for that, but mine has shifted into a much more specialized practice. Uh, But that's why I have other people working for me. You know, Mm -hmm. when someone wants a massage, they can still get one, but you know, just, find out and it's going to take some time um to find out what you want to do where your passion is so i encourage people like learn you know yeah take continuing ed classes like go get different types of body work to see what might resonate with you and you know for god's sake profit first that (laughs) um that was great advice that was given to me you know the the book is profit first by mike michalowicz and Um, I, you know, I was doing some variation of it, but this whole pandemic too ha- is turning into like a reset for my business because I'm looking forward to getting myself and my business into a much better financial position. Mm. So, um, and, and I, and I think unfortunately that's why a lot of therapists were struggling so much during this whole time is because they didn't have a plan, mm-hmm. you know, because in massage school, they didn't teach business. You know, they, they taught you how to get better at it, but it's still definitely a side note. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, um, and I, you know, honestly, the school that I went to, um, there, there's another school that actually my recent therapist, uh, came from and they do a thousand hour program and they have an externship program. And I love that. That's, you know, that's an option for some therapists because, you know, at my school, we graduated and it was like, okay, you're on your own. Where getting into a school that has an internship or externship program, um, you know, it really helps the students 
decide what kind of environment they want to work in, you know, mm-hmm. where they want to go, what they want to do. And from a business owner perspective, it gives us a chance to kind of try a therapist out before we full on hire them, mm-hmm. you know, because if, if you get someone, you know, I, I know a friend who she said she has hired and fired over 50 massage therapists. And all I think is, I no, I, that would drive me <laughs> insane. I, I couldn't That's handle that many people. <laughs> That's a lot of paperwork. Yeah. Where, you know, in my 15 years, I've had five people work for me. Yeah. So, you know, and, and what's they say, it's like slow to hire, quick to fire. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, students today definitely read Profit First. Um, also read The Pumpkin Plan because that's going to help you. Same author. It's going to help you identify who who those you know ideal clients are yeah. and yeah. who you want to work with, who you don't, and also you know just boundaries. You know, respect mm-hmm. yourself, respect your body. Don't just go chase after the money, um, and you know learn to say no and learn to stand up for yourself. Yeah. Because, and, and it's something I, I still struggle with, you know, almost 20 years later, you know, there, there are some clients where I let them get away with, you know, missing an appointment or being late or, you know, so it, it's, it's still, you know, it never ends, but yeah. well, that's all really I've learned. good advice. So while, while I still have you here, I saw on your site that part of your work now, maybe this is the specialty you referenced, is it seems like a lot of table stretching and that kind of thing. Yes. Is that a big so, part of what you do? Yes. Yeah, so, is there um, a particular method you would, it's something I would like to do more of. I don't do enough mm-hmm. of it right now. And uh, so talk about that, but also maybe what, what's, your, what's your take on some of these specialized stretch only places that are popping up? Oh yeah, I'll, I'll give you my take. Um, so I am a level two certified fascial stretch therapist. I did my training through Stretch Twin Institute in Arizona. Anne and Chris Frederick created the program, and it, I mean it's it's not cheap. You know, between between the tuition and taking time off of work and lodging, you know, going out to Arizona for a week and everything else. Um, you know, I'd say between level one and level two, it was easily, again, everything, you know, probably close to $10,000. Oh, wow. However, um, their program, it's 90% hands-on. It's fun. You learn a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I, I don't regret that training at all. And, um, So what FST does is it uses gentle traction to get into the joint capsules. So, Mm -hmm. you know, when I say assisted stretching, I like to call it, and I got this from one of the TAs there, uh, I I get people stretch drunk. Mm -hmm. You know, they get off the table and they kind of have this look of like, what just happened? You know, and, and, and it's funny too, because when I started teaching, and just as an aside, um, when I started teaching yoga tune-up, I thought like, this is going to be great. You know, I'll teach people how to stretch themselves. And I found out that people would rather pay me a hundred dollars to stretch them for an hour than pay $20 to learn to stretch them themselves. <laughs> so now it's like, okay, I'll take your money. <laughs> but, yeah. um, I, you know, we, we have a lot of those stretch places popping up all over the Metro Detroit area. And I, you know, I, back when they were first coming up, I I had to do my research because I want to see like what, you know, because when somebody calls and asks like, how are you different from this place? I can now tell them. Um, One place I went to specifically said they have a 10 step stretch protocol. Sort of so, like a cookie cutter thing. Like everyone yeah, very, gets this protocol. Very okay. cookie cutter. Yeah. And then the guy spent, cause it was like a 30 minute session and he spent 20 minutes hammering out my IT band with a foam roller because he told me no amount of stretching is going to loosen this up. Okay. And, and I'm thinking, wait, I wanted to get stretched. I didn't want to get, you know, railed with a foam roller. Wait. And were you in, were you undercover? Oh, I was, yeah, I'm always yeah. undercover. Yeah. I, I don't, you know, I just tell people when, you know, I put on the intake form, I'm self-employed or I put, you know, I'm a yoga teacher. Um, and then the other place I went to, 
you know, they, they had kind of this uh, similar setup, but I, I remember this person telling me, you know, cause I said, Oh, what, you know, what's your background? What, you know, what does everyone do here? Like what's their training? And, um, some of them weren't even licensed massage therapists. And I think most of them aren't at those places. Yeah. I, they're like personal trainers or like oh. this one person told me they all have neuroscience degrees. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, why are you working at a Swiss yeah, franchise? <laughs> you could be doing so much more and, you know, seeing a couple of people just sitting around on their cell phones. And, um, and I, I will say, so one of my newer clients, she's been with us for about two and a half years now. And, and I remember seeing her intake for the first time and on it, she had put a note. She said, I've been getting stretched weekly for seven years at another place. Wow. I thought, oh man, the pressure's on, you know, like I was nervous to see this woman and she came in for her first session and she said, okay, I, I've been with this place for seven years. It's going to take me some time to break up with them. So she was staggering her appointments out. She was going to see me two weeks later and then you know, see them in between. And she came in two weeks later and she said, well, I broke up with the other place and she's been coming in weekly ever since. And she left a review and it was like, you know, like two months, because I think it was only two months at that point, you know, two months of getting stretched by, by Rebecca is better than seven years of weekly stretching at another place. And what she liked about the work that I did was not only that it's not cookie cutter, but she was in a private room, you know, where all those other places, oh, yeah. you know, there's, there's 10 tables out. It's loud. You don't have any privacy. And, um, which does make say, sense to me, like the the ability to sort of like truly let yourself relax in yeah. in an environment yeah. where you know, like you, you're like, oh, how do I look right now? There's there other people watching me be stretched in this weird way. Like, I'm, it makes me kind of tense to think about that too. Yeah, so, yeah, the and, environment, and also I, that makes yeah, sense. and and you know, also when when I went for a session, again, it was very cookie cutter because um, I, I had been to this this one place in particular, two different times, like a year apart, because I guess I fell out of their system. They sent another, oh, come in for a free stretch. And, you know, of course they want to sell you on their membership program. And, you know, right. we don't do memberships here. We don't, um, you know, we, we have clients that come in anywhere from once a week, every other week, once a month, you know, quarterly, and just kind of on an as needed basis. But, you know, we're very much about building relationships with our clients. And I think that's what sets us apart is, you know, I still have my very first client that I saw in November of 2003, you know, she's mm -hmm. still with me. So, and I joke, like, it's, it's like a marriage with some of my clients, you know, cause we've been together so long. Well, that, so, that therapeutic relationship isn't talked about enough and it's so valuable. No. Yeah. Like when you, when you find that, that person who's your person, who just, you know, you like, you probably have a shorthand with them, you know, like you can look at her and know exactly what's, oh, yeah. what's going on and just like, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's really, and again, I, I feel like that's what sets us apart from, you know, the massage on these massage greens stretch, you know, everybody everywhere else um, is because we build those relationships. Yeah. And, and that's why I think, I had clients telling me I could reopen before I even knew, you know, I had mm -hmm. 10 clients reach out to me like, you can reopen on the 15th. When can I get in? And, um, you know, it's funny because I heard from a lot of other therapists, you know, their clients would be texting them like, I'll, I'll come to your house. I'll pay you cash. I'll pay you double. They were trying to get a <laughs> massage for however they could. And part of me was like, yeah, part of me was like, wait, my clients aren't doing that. Do they not like me enough? And then I thought, or maybe they're just being respectful yeah. of the fact that we can't work right now. Like, uh, and, like prohibition, like gosh, speaky if you start popping up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, and when they when they started to say, you know, you could do stuff outdoors. One of my one of my friends, you know, who's a client, texted me said, "So massage table outside? How, how's that going to work?" <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and, and, you know, that's just it. And, and that's another thing, you know, new therapists really need to understand is you are, you're providing a very personal service to these people and you need to be prepared to deal with whatever might come up. You know, if someone has like an emotional release on the table, you need to know how to handle that. Um, 
And also when you are building these relationships, you know, you're going to know, and that's, what's going to set you apart is you're going to know, like, if your client wants the table warmer on or off, you're going to know what kind of music they like. And, and that's definitely what is, you know, no matter if you're working for yourself or for a chain or for an independent place or whatever, that is what's going to make you memorable. And, Mm -hmm. you know, they're going to remember that. And then when they go, like when they're out of town and they go to, you know, as, as we like to call them, you know, the pizza hut massage places, I actually wrote a blog (laughs) post about that, like comparing massage to pizza, because, you know, if, if you're out of town, like when I'm traveling, that's kind of the only time I will go to any type of chain place because I, I know what I'm getting. It's yeah. not going to be great, but I know what to expect. So don't go to Pizza Hut expecting the best pizza of your life because you're going to be disappointed. Right. But I say like, you know, Michigan Massage and Wellness, we're kind of like the buddies pizza of Michigan. You know, it's special. It's authentic. It's been around forever. People appreciate it, but you can't get it everywhere. Yeah, for sure. Well, thanks so much. I, this is a, such a great conversation. We learned about Michigan yeah. and what you're doing over there. And I'm going to look into getting educated more on, on some stretching. I think that's such a valuable skill. Uh, absolutely. Okay, and, yeah. you know, seeing more and more places offering it and, and everything. And, and that's really, again, about five years ago, I kind of went down the rabbit hole with continuing education and I spent a solid 18 months learning and traveling and doing all these new techniques and modalities, but it has gotten me to kind of doing exactly what I want to be doing right now. And, and again, I tell people, you don't come and see me to sleep on the table for an hour. You come and see me to, you know, unfreeze your frozen shoulder or fix your plantar fasciitis in 30 minutes. You know, it's not going to be a permanent fix, but you're going to get a lot more relief And again, not to say that a more traditional like Swedish or therapeutic massage doesn't have its place. Absolutely does. But, you know, I always encourage people to like learn, you know, there's so many, so many things out there and so many different avenues you could go. Yeah. And, um, you know, the world is your oyster. Just go, go clamming for it. (laughs) (laughs) There's my pull quote right there. (laughs) Well, we can chat for another minute off the recording, but Rebecca Tam, thanks so much for being in the massage, massage Hodge podcast to any listeners out there. You can find us on Apple podcasts and Spotify or wherever you listen. And I appreciate you and we'll catch you next time.